Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel, M. Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to paint this gorgeous, lovely sunset beach scene. I'm going to teach you how to block in your artwork to create realistic tones for a sunset, how to create a nice gradient in your clouds and how to create realistic clouds, and especially how to create water, things like sea foam, waves and texture in your water. So you can create this gorgeous sunset beach here in acrylic paints. So let's get into it. Now the colours for today's painting tutorial that you'll need are blue, white, yellow, orange, purple, black and a colour called rose which is just basically pink, a purpley red tone. So purple, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red and lots of white you'll get a nice pinky tone. Now I've got an 8x10 canvas here and I've all I've done is painted burnt sienna. I've used chalk and straight down the middle if you imagine the canvas divided into two and right in the middle of that I've put the sun and I've got the horizon halfway down my canvas so I've got half as the sky and half as the water and the beach and I've got a wave that is going diagonally straight through a bit of wash and some land in the left hand corner because that's where I'm going to sign it so we've got half sky half beach and what we're going to do is we're going to create a sunset and we're going to use hot and cold uh, colors to create a realistic tone so if you want to pause the video you can just copy it down before we begin and let's get started now on my palette I've got lots of different hots and cold tones just to show you so I've got purple in the corner and then I've got purple with tons of white to create a lavender tone I've got blue a tiny bit of black with lots and lots of white to create a very light blue a middle tone and a bright blue and then I've got some black I've got warm gray which is black orange and purple and then I've just got a black and blue combination which is Prussian blue and here is the rose color some orange some orangey yellow some bright yellow some yellow and white mixed together just so I have it pre-mixed but just the core colors we can make all these colors so don't worry if you don't have all these just from the core colors of blue orange purple yellow white black and that pinky tone we can make all the colors so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a bright blue, some cobalt blue, and I'm just going to block in just roughly where I want the shadows to be of our wave. Just as we're painting over the chalk, I've got a rough outline. Even though we're going to paint over in a very bright tone for the sunset, the great thing about acrylics is if you use a darker tone, like a blue, when you paint over it, the blue will shine through and it will keep our outline so I know roughly where everything is and where all the proportions max because I've already um, drawn this outline out in chalk. So I'm just getting some blue and I'm just creating where I want the shadows to be before I block in the painting. And I'm just going to get a blue and I'm just going to put where things like the waves are because you're going to have shadows as the sun is off in the far distance this things like the um, waves they're going to be the darkest shadows imagine like you were standing with your back to the water it'd almost be like a silhouette so we're going to take some bright white and a large brush and right in the center of our canvas that's where we want our viewers to look at so that's going to be our brightest area and that's going to be our sun and all we're going to do is add a tiny bit of yellow to lots of white to create this sort of naples yellow which is just a really creamy yellow and we're just going to block in where the sun is going to be at its brightest and we're just going to add pure yellow straight to the top and it's just going to get a bit darker but brighter as it goes away from the sun so all we're doing is we're using hot tones yellows oranges to create a massive heat source where that light source is coming from and we're just going to go down and we're just going to reflect it down onto the water below it because that's going to be where all the heat is shining on those lovely waves. So we're going to add some more heat to it. So how do we do that? We're going to add a little bit of orange to our yellow to create this golden yellow tone. So all you do is you just add a little bit of orange, just a smidge to bright yellow and you should get like a golden colour and all we're going to do is just create more heat so if you think of that um, sun as being incredibly bright we want to create the illusion of heat in the sky and we want to sort of reflect that down onto our waves 
So you can see there, look, the little bits of blue are still shining through, so we know where everything is. And we're just going to add a little bit more orange to the mix. Tiny bit of white to the mix just to not make it too harsh. And we're just going to use that big brush just to blend in the tones. And as I say, like always with acrylics, they're very streaky. Sometimes you need to do two coats. That is totally normal. So as we're building up our beach and our sunset, don't worry about if your work looks a bit scruffy in these early stages. That's totally to be expected. So look, we're just blocking in over the burnt sienna and we're just trying to create I'm just trying to figure out where things like the light will be. I was going to put some wash here, but I think that wave is going to actually be going, coming down onto the land. So I don't think I'm going to have some wash. I think we just have some dark sand. So we're going to get cooler as we get away from the sun. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use cooler tones, so more shadow tones. So what we're going to do, we can't really jump from really hot to cool. So we're going to add some purple lots and lots of white to that orange mix and we're going to make say a bridge color and what that does is it just tricks your eye so we don't have such a real harsh jump from things like orange into blue so all we're doing is we're just trying to create this nice transition color and as i say don't worry if it's streaky we're just trying to block it in and we're just going to get cooler as we get up towards the corners so by just adding more purple and lots and lots and lots of whites to create sort of a lavender tone you should get cooler as you get towards the top so look all we're going to do is we're going to add some blue and lots and lots of white now let's do the same trick so we're just getting cooler as we go upwards towards the corners and by darkening our corners what it should do is make your painting your composition uh, make the viewer stare straight down the middle because it gives it nice dark edges which really frames your um, painting and obviously if you get it framed later on by a framer it will look even better but what it does is it just makes your viewer concentrate straight down the middle. And because we've got that sun and we're getting darker now, we're just adding some more blue to the mix. It should create a nice transition in the sky from hot to cold. And it should center the viewer's eyes towards our sun. So look, just using a big brush, we just want to blend it and create this nice transition where it's getting darker towards the corners as we move up. So I'm going to take some of that blue and white. So all it is is lots of blue, lots and lots and lots of white, and a dab of black, just a tiny dab. And all I'm going to do is mix it into the orange. And I'm just going to use that tone down here on our water that is hitting the beach. And again, the reason it's a bit cooler is because it's further away from the sun. So think of the light source as a heat. So think of a campfire or something. The further and further away from it, A, it's less bright and B, it's cooler because you're not standing next to it. So all we're doing, we're doing that in the colors. We're just using the, these tones to emphasize the fact that you're further away from the light source. So again, just block it in, use a big brush if you can. I'm just using a big round headed brush and I'm just trying to cover up as much as the burnt sienna. So we're going to create a new tone now. So we're going to create a warm grey. So I'm going to show you how I make it. I've got it pre-mixed, but I'm going to show you how to make it. So we're going to take orange and we're going to take some black. And we're going to add a little bit of purple to that mix. So we get this nice orangey browny tone. And we're just going to create a nice um, warm sort of grey that we can use for our land. And again, we want to block in this left hand corner. That's where we're gonna sign it. We want a nice, a nice dark tone, so when we put our signature, our signature shines up against that. So once you're all blocked in and you're happy with it, we're going to dry it with a hairdryer and we're just gonna reapply another layer of exactly the same paint. Because as I say, with acrylics, they're very streaky. They're quite watery. So all by just drying it and just going over your work, we're going to make everything a lot more professional, a lot more brighter. So we're going to start with our sunset. So we're going to start with our sun. So we're going to use bright white, and then we're going to use some of that Naples yellow, which was just white, and a dab of yellow to create a nice sort of creamy yellow tone. 
and we're just going to reflect it downwards and you can just see by adding a second layer just how much brighter that is so we're going to do um, bright yellow now and we're just going to go around there and create the source of the heat so we're going to make it look like it's reflecting downwards and that is just going to be the sort of um, sun just sort of glimmering on the tops of the nearest waves to it and then we're just going to add that gold tone which was yellow and a dab of orange because it's going to get warmer and create a darker tone there so as the um, bright yellow is fading away from the sun in the sky it's just getting a bit darker so by just adding a little bit of orange to your yellow you should get this gorgeous gold tone so just block it in, just smear it all together. But you can see just how much brighter now it looks. The colors are so much more brighter just from adding a second layer. So we're going to add a little bit more heat to it. So we're going to add some orange to that mix. A little bit more yellow. Just create a, just a little bit darker orange. Still not all the way orange. Still got plenty of yellow in it. And it's just a bit darker than the previous tone. And we're just going to use our big brush and we're just going to blend these tones together. So by using a big brush, it's actually a lazy way to do it. But what it does, it actually blends the tones a lot easier. Because you've got a lot more brush, you're covering a lot more surface. And by just using a tiny bit of water, not too much, and using a larger round-headed brush, you could just ease up as you blend the tones. And it's a really easy way to blend lovely tones together so we're going to add more orange to the mix because we're getting darker and we're going to add a teeny dot of black just a tiny dot there we go not too much and it's going to create this lovely darker orangey gold tone and we're just going to darken up our corners of our horizon and whatever we do on one side we want to kind of try to mirror on the opposite side so look all we're doing we're just trying to mirror the, the light source on the opposite side just so it all blends together see that's looking fantastic just from adding another coat you see and what we're going to do is while well, we've got that lovely tone and we've already laid that underpainting we're just going to put some heat onto our water that's going to be coming up on the sand and what that should do is just create a sort of mirror effect of the light source just shining as it gets cooler towards the viewer so it's still got this nice glimmer of, on the water so by laying the underpainting and when we put the detail on the top it's going to trick the viewers eyes because the tones are going to do all the work so remember as before we want to get cooler but we don't want to jump to blue too much so we're going to add purple and lots of white into the tone we just created and we're going to try to create a bridge tone between the really warm um, part of our sunset, our part of our sky, and the cooler tones in the top corners. So we're gonna use this tone, and while it's wet and we've got our big brush, we're just gonna to try to blend it. It's a great tutorial to learn blending, and just taking your time. But as I said from the previous tutorials, what you can do is if you ever get streaky or you um, find that your colors aren't blending well, you can always dry it with a hairdryer and you can always go over the top and just use a dry brush and very little paint and just blend the tones together. So as I say, just by adding a second layer and by just taking your time, I even use my fingers a lot as well as a, a, um, a large brush just to sort of soften up areas, just try to blend tones, just try to get those transitions between the tones seamless. So as I've been saying in all my paint tutorials, if you nail the background tones, if you nail the underpainting, when you add the detail over the top and as you get better at drawing and you get better at um, small detail and fine detail on your work, that will really really complement it but it's the the underpainting by nailing the tones so all we're gonna do is add white to a little bit of purple and get cooler yep so by nailing the tones it will trick the viewers eyes because when we add the clouds over the top because there's a lovely transition behind the clouds 
the viewer's eyes won't notice how fantastic the clouds look unless there's a sky that mirrors the same transitions. So it's just little tricks I'm trying to teach you by just nailing all these underpaintings, all these, um, taking your time, learn to blend. You will get so much better with your work as you lay the detail over the top. So just take your time, just work on your blending. It's a fantastic um, acrylic painting tutorial to work on your blending. That's the great thing with these tutorials. I'm hopefully trying to teach you all these little tricks and tips that you can apply to any painting. And once you start nailing them and they become um, programmed into your subconscious that you can do them without even thinking, like tying your shoe, you will get so much better, so much quicker just by learning all these tips and tricks, hopefully. So I just want to take the opportunity as we get cooler into the corners with some more blue. I just want to say thank you everyone who's liking and subscribing. Um, we've got plenty of painting tutorials on the channel now. And as I say, I'm hopefully going to add a new one of these every week for all of you guys. If there's anything people want to learn, you can always DM me on my Instagram, which is at mstripaintings, or you can leave um, ideas in the comments below. If anyone ever has any questions, please put them in the comments below the videos and I will hopefully try to answer them as best as I can. If there's any queries, um, a lot of people always ask why I paint my canvas burnt sienna <laughs> and things like what brushes and brands of paint and things like that. If any of you have any questions, please just put them in the comments below. And thank you everyone who's liking and subscribing. As the channel is growing, it's getting more, um, the algorithm of YouTube is picking it up more and it's getting shown more to more artists. And that's the whole point of the channel is to help fellow artists. So thank you so much all you artists out there who are enjoying the videos. You're really, by promoting the channel, you're really helping other artists get to see these videos and learn. So thank you so much. So all I'm doing, I'm just neating up my sun. I'm just using some bright white and then I'm just getting some yellow and white. And I'm just trying to make it more um, highlighted because that's where I want my viewers to um, stare right down into the middle of the painting. So all I'm doing is I'm just trying to make it more of a semicircle and just make it as vibrant as I can, just in that incredible bright object. So I just want the viewer to be lost in it. Hopefully these nice tutorials they, um, when people go on holiday and you go to all these lovely places and if you, or you might live near a beach or a lovely place like this you can take photos or you can do some plein air painting and then when you come home you can create your own versions of all these pictures so we're going to do the clouds now so we're going to take that lovely orangey color which was orange yellow and a dot of black and we just add a little tiny bit more orange to it and we're going to create some clouds so all we're doing we've just got a slightly darker tone than the background and i'm just using a little round headed brush and i'm just going to create the illusion of clouds so again what we're going to try to do we're going to try to trick the viewer's eyes by using heat on these clouds by using these bright tones these orangey yellows and we're going to get cooler as we get further away from the sun so we're going to add some of that rose color so to make rose you can just use red tiny bit of blue and lots and lots of white and we're just going to add some orange to that mix so it's still very orangey and it's just slightly darker and we're just going to create the impression of clouds now all i do is i just use a round headed brush and i just create little shapes so just little squiggles and i just always go up towards the um, to a slight angle so I always start quite flat and then I just sort of go off at an angle and what that does is it just kind of looks like the um, clouds are going around the dome shape of the earth so that's the way I do it I always start off quite flat and then I just go at a slight angle and all I'm doing is I'm making sure I've leaving gaps so we're gonna have more rows to that mix so it's getting more purpley but it's still very warm still got lots of orange in it and I'm going to add a dab of purple just so it creates this nice sort of darker lavender tone and look I'm just gonna get my brush and I'm just gonna go sideways and you've got this pinky color now a tiny bit of orange and a tiny bit of purple and as I say I'm just leaving gaps and I'm just sort of creating impressions 
but what the colours are doing by gradually getting cooler as they go off into the corners what it should do is trick your eyes so just by using tones let's say there's no detail we're going to just use tones to trick the viewers eyes this is a very easy tutorial it's for beginners and intermediates so we don't want to leave anyone behind so just by learning how to do all this as I say as your skills get better you can work on all your detail and try to go photo realistic if you have a reference photo but if you know how the colors work it will make your life so much easier so we're getting cooler so what we're going to do we're going to add more purple so by adding more purple we're getting cooler and cooler as we go out so again watch just leaving gaps and we're just creating shapes and as those clouds you can link some clouds together what it should do is look like the light source of that sun is blaring onto certain clouds and it's getting, creating shadows on other ones. So by just tipping the brush sort of diagonally and just making little splodges with it, just loading it up with some paint and I'm just creating little lines and shapes. And as I say, I'm making sure I leave plenty of background sky just, and because we've got that lovely transition in the sky, by adding these clouds over the top, we can just make it look like it's gradually getting cooler. So look, just add more purple to get more cooler. It's really easy. It's such an easy tutorial. It's such an easy technique. As I say, it's just like building a house. We're just doing, we did the foundation with the underpainting. We've blocked it in, and now we're adding all the bits and bobs that you need. And it just gets better and more detailed as we go along. And it all comes together at the end. So as I say, with a lot of painting, you've just got to believe in yourself. You've got to see something before you create it. So think of what you want to create. Think of it in your mind's eye. Think of what you want to do and work towards it. So look, there we go. Just by using that pure purple now, just we're just trying to frame our painting to create the darks at the top. Just make it nice, nice and framed, the darker tones right in the top corners. Excellent. So our sunset is starting to look fantastic. Our sky is looking really good. We're just going to put some finishing touches on it just with the purple. And we're just trying to create nice shadow tones to complement the highlights. So we've got a mixture between the darks and the lights. So we've got this gorgeous transition where some parts of your clouds aren't getting the sunlight and some are. And it just creates a really, really nice effect. As I say, it's not detailed, it's really easy. It's an easy tutorial. And what I'm going to do, look, I'm going to show you. We've got, we've got a brighter highlight just so we've got more rose, sort of purpley pink, just to sort of soften these transitions and then we've got a darker more shadow tone version so that's what i say you can make your own hots and colds it's just learning where the light would be hitting so look this area we're going to just make a bit darker because maybe it's not getting as much light those clouds are a bit more cooler they're getting blocked by other clouds and they're just not getting as much light so that's why they're a bit darker in tone and it's that easy so if you want to lighten something up, you just make it a bit hotter in tone. And if you want to darken something up, just make it a bit cooler in tone. And that should create a fantastic effect, which looks quite realistic. It's got no detail. It's just from the colours, as I say. And as your work gets better and you get more talented, you'll find it really, really easy to add the detail because you're already nailing the colours. So when you're happy with your sunset sky, and you're all finished please dry it with a hairdryer because the only reason you don't have to dry it with a hair dryer if not just leave it just to dry naturally acrylics dry really quick so just leave it for 15 minutes and let it dry naturally because what we're going to do is we're going to use some painting tape and if you put painting tape on a, a horizon say here like if we've um we place the tape down and your painting is still wet it will pull off the paint so just dry your work with a hairdryer or just let it dry for 10-15 minutes to the acrylic paint to dry and just place some um, tape if you try to measure a straight line my um, 
I think my little easel is a bit wonky and I think that's why the video looks a bit wonky because my camera's straight and I think it's just a bit wonky but um you want to try to measure out a straight horizon just simply for the fact you don't want to get to a finished painting and your horizon's wonky so when you put your nice painting on the wall it looks wonky so just take your time little things like this as I say I'm just neatening up areas just where I've missed areas with the same tones just little tricks that you wouldn't think of just common sense things really really do help because um, I know all this through just making mistakes and as I say you'll, you'll learn through making mistakes so all I'm gonna do is um, get some orange and yellow to create a really bright golden tone and I'm just gonna create some clouds just right down here on the horizon where we've got some tape I just want to go right down to sort of the sea line and just highlight some of these clouds just so it looks like they're fading off into the horizon just where our sunset sort of finishing and meeting sort of the water as it comes towards the beach so as I say you can go more detailed than what I'm doing this this tutorial is for beginners but there's no reason if you have a reference photo and you want to create more highlights the um, tutorial that we did recently which is a bit more advanced with the clouds and it had things like highlight colors and more shadows you can always apply that to this picture but as I say I don't want to make it too detailed I just want to make it nice and easy for everyone I don't want anyone getting left behind as we move forward so all I'm doing I'm just using some purple just right up here in the corners and again it's just to frame the painting just to make it look my corners just look a bit darker just using a little fine liner smudging it with my finger <laughs> so there we go easy peasy so we're going to remove the tape and hopefully because the background was dry look it doesn't peel off any paint we've still got some chalk marks but that's okay that's just so we know where the horizon line is And I think I'm just going to neaten some bits up. So I'm just going to neaten up the sun again. I think sometimes with the whites, with acrylics, you have to give the white maybe one or two um, layers. You just have to dry it and go over it again. Because white is such a um, bright colour, if you have any burnt sienna or any yellow or anything like that it still shines through so with acrylic sometimes you just with the real bright highlights you just got to give it one or two coats just to make it look more bright and just emphasize an area of your painting so when you're happy with your um your sky your sunset please dry your painting again just so either dry it with a hairdryer and just leave it to dry and let the acrylics dry naturally for 10-15 minutes because we're going to use tape again because we're going to create the illusion of water now so we want to create a nice straight horizon but obviously we've just painted our sun and those clouds so we don't want them to be wet so please dry your work we're going to line up our tape or try to measure your horizon to be nice and straight and we're going to take a flat brush because a flat brush is perfect for drawing and painting straight lines so we're going to create a lovely tone which is that golden tone which is yellow and a little bit of orange so a little bit of orange and plenty of yellow and a dab of black just to create a bit like the sky that we did earlier so a bit like the sunset sky and we're going to add a tiny bit of that rose color and what we should create is a really bright orangey tan color so almost like a leather color really really bright tan and what that's going to be is going to be the waves that are closest to the sun that are picking up the heat in their tone so what we're doing is by using a flat brush we can go almost dead flat and we're going to try to create the implication of waves and by using that tone it looks realistic because it's still a hot tone because obviously it's nearer to the sun which is a hot source of light so where we've got that blue we're just going to try to create the impression of waves so all we're doing 
is we're just using that flat brush we're tipping it sideways and we're just trying to draw straight lines and diagonal lines and just leaving plenty of that underpainting to shine through just so again it tricks the viewers eyes so all we're going to do now is we're just going to add more purple to that mix so just making it cooler and darker so it's this nice gray yellowy tone a little bit of orange just to heat it up and we're just going to use that flat brush and we're just going to try to create the illusion of waves so we're just using a nice subtle tone we're going right up to that tape and what we're trying to do just like the sky and just like the clouds we're just trying to get cooler as we get further away from the sun and because we're going right up to that tape what it does it just gives us a nice straight sea line and it just gives us a nice uh, definition of where the sky ends and the sea starts so what I'm doing I'm just where we had those blue cobalt blue lines I can still see them and I'm just trying to create diagonal lines just to give the impression of waves so by just adding more purple to that mix it's just cooling it down so what I'm doing I'm just getting cooler as I'm coming towards the viewer so as I come towards the beach the sunset sort of light is wearing off and it's getting cooler where that wave is coming towards the shore so while I've got that color I'm just gonna block in a nice shadow tone where we drew those diagonal lines I'm just going to create sort of the wave sort of shadow tone so just try to block it in just try to cover up any bits that you had a bit of cobalt blue so by just going over the top of that we're just trying to create a nice ridge and what it should be doing just like the clouds it's a nice transition isn't when we add the real darks as we come towards the viewer the tones again will look like they're fading off into the sunlight so by using warm tones as it gets towards the sun again it just tricks the viewers eyes so I want to teach you all how to create a texture in water so a definition to create realistic water so all I'm doing I'm gonna tip my flat brush sideways and I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to the mix and we're going to create the shadows of the little waves as the wash and the water comes up onto the sand so what I'm doing I'm trying to create a sort of wave shape so if you imagine it curls round and all I'm trying to do is just create little pockets so I'm leaving a gap in the underpainting and I'm creating almost like if you think of a um, something like um, a ring I'm just creating loads of little rings little pockets that come around at a diagonal and the underpainting the heat from the underpainting should create the look of hots and colds and shadows of the wave and the water so as you say it curls around it's very hard to describe but visually if you can see what I'm doing I'm just curling it round and I'm leaving gaps in between so if you think of like a beehive for example where you have all these little segments I'm trying to create lots of little segments into the water and what that is it's just where you get shadows where the water where the wave is cascading and the light sort of trickles around it and again it just gives it more definition so what we've done is we've put the underpaintings we just remove our tape get rid of any chalk marks if you've got any chalk on your work so just lick your finger and just wipe away the chalk what we've done is we created the underpainting and we've laid down a nice shadow tone and it goes exactly with the transition before so we've created this lovely seamless color contrast where we've got the lights and it gets cooler as it comes towards the beach so what we want to do is we want to create a really dark shadow tone so some blue and some black to create sort of a Prussian blue so we're going to add blue and black to it but it's still going to have some heat so we're going to add some purple and we're going to create a really really dark shadow tone and we're just going to add a little bit of heat to it so we're going to add some orange into it so it's this really dark bluey brown tone and what that does is it creates a sort of silhouette um, color so what we're going to try to do to create texture we're going to draw in where we want to have sort of a big wave so what we want to do is if you imagine this tone is getting no sunlight you've got the wave coming down on it 
and it's got almost like the waves got its back towards the sun so it's going to be incredibly dark it's almost going to be like a silhouette but we don't want to do it black because it would be just too cartoony and too harsh so we've created this really nice bluey dark browny tone and what we're trying to do we're going to try to create all the froth and wash from the um the wave coming into the beach so where our sunset where we've got these lovely tones and as I say, it's got this natural transition where it's already tricking your eye. We've got this really dark shadow tone that we're going to put on top. And as I say, as it brings it towards the viewer, because it's darker, what it should do is give it a more 3D effect, a more realistic effect, really easy trick, and make it look like it's coming towards the viewer. So that wave is coming in towards the beach. So just think of where you would have shadows just think of where that wash would be cascading down and you just want to create just like we did with the little pockets on the water we just want to create the illusion of texture illusion of shadow where the wash is sort of hitting and bubbling up against as it hits the shore and it hits that shallow water we just want to create the illusion so it makes it more three-dimensional so just like before where we created those little cool pockets with that purpley brown tone we're going to use that really dark shadow tone and we're just going to create these curls that we were just doing so just think of it we're going to curl around like a wave shape but we're still going to leave plenty of that underpainting and we're just going to join some of these waves into the water so where you've got a wave it's a seamless again just like the sky it's like this seamless transition where it just sort of moves with its sort of current so what we want to do is we just want to join into the shallow water some of that shadow tone just so it looks seamless just so it looks like it's all merging into each other so exactly the same technique I'm just using a very fine liner I haven't got much paint I don't want it to be too harsh but I'm just creating really just gentle really fine lines into my water and these are going to be all the shadows as the water sort of cascades it's just all the bits that aren't getting as much sun and they create that gorgeous sort of ripple effect on the water and by doing this and then when we put the highlights on top at the end what it does is it creates this great contrast between hops and colds and just gives your waves and your water this realistic texture and this realistic three-dimensional look to it so it's just tricking the eye just by using tones so we're just gonna put all these darks on first before we put the detail on easy peasy now what I want to do is I want to because it's a bit of a harsh um, transition between the wave and the sea where you've got that big diagonal line I'm going to swap back to my flat brush and I'm just going to use that same tone and I'm just going to create some flat waves just joining into our sea just so there's not such a jump between that big dark shadow tone of the wave and our ocean so all I'm doing, I'm just using that exact same tone just to highlight some of those nearest waves. As I say, they will be getting the least amount of light. So what I'm just trying to do is just go over them very gently with hardly any paint, just to make them a bit darker, just so it looks not as harsh on the eyes. And some of those waves just makes it look a bit more realistic. So easy trick, just with flat brush, hardly any paint. You can create really fine detail just with the flat brush because it's so thin it's almost as good as a fine liner so there we go easy peasy and what that does it just transitions nicely so just like before where we've got the dark blue that we used in that corner we're going to just use a little brush and all i'm going to do is just load up some paint and i'm just going to create the froth of the water so again I'm leaving gaps just like before I'm allowing some of that nice warmy sort of color to shine through and I'm just using some of that dark blue which was blue lots of white and a dab of black just to create this nice cool blue you could even add a tiny bit of purple to it to make it even cooler and that's the same colors we've got in our corners of our background sky and I'm gonna take the same color and I'm just going to outline our wash that's coming up here onto our beach onto our shore 
And what that is, is that's the foam that when you have a wave, it peels back on the shore and it creates this gorgeous sort of foam effect. So I want to teach you how to create realistic water. So we're going to take that lighter tone, which was just more white to the mix. And we're just going to highlight the middle area because that area is under the sun. It's going to be a little bit brighter and a little bit more of a highlight. So again, look, I'm just leaving little gaps. And what those little gaps do is it creates the illusion of bubbles and froth and just sort of the waves just cascading and sort of um, throwing up sea spray. So just really easy technique. And I'm going to use that same tone just to highlight this edge. And again, because that edge is going to be hitting the sunlight. So the sunlight is going to be getting it. So it's just a really easy trick. Use one cooler tone for the shadow and one brighter tone, just a bit more white in the mix, just to create a highlight. So the reason we add a little bit of blue to our um, highlights is just so it keeps it cool. So we don't want to use just jet white because it would just be too harsh on the eyes. So just like black, we didn't want to use just pure black. We wanted to add a bit of blue and orange to it because we just don't want it too harsh. So we're going to take some of that nice blue tone. So it was blue, lots and lots of white and a little jet um, touch of black. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the sea foam. So just like we created those little pockets where we created sort of little zigzags, we're going to take a fine liner and we're going to do exactly the same thing with the sea froth. So as the water hits our beach and our sunset light is sort of running out, the foam of the beach as the wave sort of cascades back and get, moves back and forth it leaves all this sort of dross where you get all bubbles and you get all this sort of streamers and it's really really easy to do so what we're going to do is just take that shadow nice blue that we've got in our sky and what we're going to do is go right up to the edges and just try to create the illusion just by making zigzags and shapes of more texture and more froth on our water. So as you see, just by laying all these foundations, by laying all these different layers and just going over the top and just adding each section, what it does, it just tricks your eye when you take a step back. So just no detail, as I say, it's very easy, very easy tutorial. We just wanna create the illusion of detail by just using these tones. So what I like to do is I just like to take the fine liner and I just create little wiggles and I join some bits up to our border. So where we have the frothy border that comes against the shore, I sort of join a few of them up. So I come like a wiggle, leave plenty of gaps. It could just be totally random and I join some of them up to this edge. And by joining it up, it just looks like it's peeling back, back into the sea. So look, just go right up to the edge just join some of them up there you go it's so easy it's such an easy technique and it really works makes all your your sea look really realistic as i say super easy acrylic painting tutorial this is but it looks good it's it's such an easy cool technique and you can use the exact same t technique, not necessarily on the sunset. So say you were painting a nice blue sky, you could just use white. You could use all, I'll happily do a nice tropical beach. I want to do something like PP Islands. So we could do that and we can, I could show you just at different tones. But it's the same technique where you lay the under part and then you lay all the sea froth on the top. So there we go. And we're just going to create a nice ridge. So I'm just going to go around. And as I say, don't worry if it's bubbly. That's kind of how the froth goes as it hits the shore. It sort of bubbles up. It's not totally even and straight. It's almost frothy like. So if you think of a bubble bath, it's all frothy and all the bubbles come up. So don't worry if it's a bit scruffy. So what we want to do, just now we've got this really nice gradient. We've got this nice shadow tone. We're going to just put a little bit of highlight on it. So again, we don't want to just use white. We still want some blue in it. So I'm just going to create just some little specks of sort of where it's hitting the light on that wave. But as I say, I don't want to go super detailed. I don't want to make the tutorial very hard this week. I just want to make it nice and easy for everyone. But you can, as I say, you can go photorealistic if you've got a nice reference photo. 
But all we're going to do is we're going to just use that fine liner and we're just going to put some highlights. So all I've done is added more white to the mix. So we've got a really lighter shade of blue. And I'm just creating more highlights. Now we've got the shadow froth. I'm just going to create some highlights of that froth. Just so again it just looks more 3D. So same technique. Some of the zigzags. I'm just creating new zigzags. Or some of them I'm just going over the top with a brighter tone. And I'm linking it up to our froth. So where we've got that ridge that's sort of coming up, I'm just linking some of them to that ridge. And I'm just trying to create sort of splats and blobs, just air bubbles and sort of, um, I don't know how you describe all these things, sort of wash. But at the same time, I'm just trying to create a nice highlight on the ridge. So if you imagine that part of the foam is getting all the light and the underneath is getting all the shadow. So what it does again, it just makes it look more 3D. Really easy technique, just with the tones. So as I say, you just take your time with it. Just going over where you think you should add some more highlights. The way I do it is I add more highlights in the center because that's the area that's obviously getting the most sunlight. So you're gonna have harsher highlights in the center. And where you've got that nice darker blue, go into the left and to the right of the center what it does is it just naturally looks like the highlights are fading and getting cooler so again just a nice trick of the eye just using the tones where it just looks like it's the light is just sort of fading out naturally but that nice whitey blue what it does it just gives everything a really nice super highlight and as I say creating sea foam and creating water definition it's not hard it's just it's just literally going back and forth and just adding just the foundation of the underpainting and just going over the top. Now we're going to take some of that shadow color that we had previously. So it was blue, black and a bit of orange. And we're just going to make a really nice shadow tone again that we had for our waves. And I just want to go around our sea foam and our waves and just neaten it up and just give a real clear definition of where the shadow is. So as that wave hits our beach and our sunset is sort of running out and the water is coming up to the beach, what it does is it just gives it a nice firm tone to just outline it and just make it look a bit more realistic. So again, it just makes it more three dimensional. So just think where you would have a shadow and then that's where you want to use the darkest tone because it's facing away from the sun it's getting the least amount of light but what it does as well just by outlining it it does make it look a little bit cartoony but it just gives a nice um, definition just so you, you can see which bit is the water and which bit is the sand and we want to obviously because we've got that nice dark corner we want to just basically sign it there so what I'm doing I'm just getting the same tone I'm just drawing a few lines just some straight lines just to create sort of the illusion of some terrain some dents in the beach as the water peels back but i think that's fantastic so i've signed it in the bottom left hand corner in that dark color and we've got a really gorgeous sunset beach painting so that this beach sunset is just superb so we've got a nice gradient in the under painting I've taught you how to do a nice sunset, how to do these realistic clouds and create um, realistic water, how to darken your corners, how to create a light effect by creating realistic waves using a different tones as they get warmer towards the sun and cooler towards the wave. And then now you know how to do things like sea foam and how to create an edge and create a wave. So thank you so much guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. As I say, my name's Murray. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below the video and please like and subscribe and please turn the bell notification so you can keep up to date with all our painting tutorials and all our new videos for artists. So thank you very much guys. Take care of yourself. See you soon. Bye.